Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the next part of the video series. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to wrap up the details that we need to on the individual sides, and then what we'll do is we're going to take a moment to to basically uh, wrap up elements like uh, adding bracing geometry, uh, areas that are going to bend. Uh, we're also going to add in uh, details for the eyes and lips, uh, some extra geometry here and there that could help with the look of our character. And finally, I'd like to end this on the ear, as well as get rid of some extra geometry that won't be necessary. So uh, in short, we're at the uh, last parts of modeling our character, uh, him or herself, depending on which gender you chose. So uh, let's begin. Uh, so first thing I usually like to do is I like to uh, check in the areas that are going to bend. So specifically around the elbow, uh, what I'm going to do here is I am going to take a moment to just kind of flatten this section out just a smidge more. Now, I think we already added the areas for the arm that are supposed to bend, so we really don't need to add too much here. So this is very similar to what we did with the hand. If we actually take a look at the hand itself, just going to take a quick look here. Yeah, we already added the bracing geometry uh, for the fingers and all this other stuff. So this is actually pretty well off, so I'm pretty happy about that. Now, uh, now remember, when we eventually smooth this, it is going to make those parts look better. If you feel that you want to uh, re still readjust or change anything there, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, and speaking of elements that need to be changed, probably going to add a an extra edge loop in this area as well. Again, any area that's going to bend, it's usually best if you add in at least three edge loops for bending. So over here, we have one edge loop specifically for the arm, one for the middle spot, and this area could be specifically for the hand, so this part is good. So that's basically just a little thing to kind of look at for these particular parts. So this is actually for the body. Now, for the pants, yeah, I think that this area could use an extra edge loop or two to help with the bending of the knee, which the knee is right over here. So I'm using the insert edge loop tool to help and I'm getting an area where the edge loop is. Uh, this is where the bending is going to take place. I'm adding one edge loop at the top, one edge loop at the bottom. And once again, now that we have those extra parts, just move the area that's kind of making that area a little bit rounder inwards a little bit more. It will help the bending considerably better. And yeah, just making sure I have the right thing because my pants are a little bit on the skin tight side, but that's okay. Yeah, it looks like it's pretty good. Okay. Now, one other thing that you might want to do every so often, because uh, I have a lot of areas that have a huge amount of geometry separating the spots, you might want to just take a moment to add some extra edge loops. So, for example, over here, just adding an extra edge loop here and in this section. Again, the purpose of adding some of these extra edge loops is Ideally, we want to try and keep these areas a little bit more squared when possible. When we have to eventually uh, smooth these parts, it does make for much better looking geometry. So that's why I added those particular parts over here. Uh, for my shirts, uh, I added some prior to this. So, uh, But this area over here looks like it could definitely use an extra edge loop. So just adding one over like so. Like I'm even going to take a moment to just move this one down. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so everything's pretty much set for that leg. Uh, my boot's already set, but then again, everyone's going to have different geometry for their uh, footwear. This is where we start to kind of deviate uh, from where we've been working on as a group, and everyone is going to take what they've learned previously and suit it to, f suit to uh, fit your own character. This is basically what separates us from... Uh, beginners that we can basically see all the details that are here and eventually add in whatever is necessary. So once again, just going to add an edge loop in any areas that look a little bit distant. Yeah, so this should work out nicely. And I'm even going to add an edge loop in the shoulder area because this area is going to bend. So I definitely want to make sure that I have enough geometry to make that work.
Now, for some, I'm going to have a little bit different geometry than other people, just because I have more of this tank topish like shirt over here. So if yours is a little bit different, that is OK. So you don't necessarily need to copy verbatim. This is basically what I'm saying. Oh, an important safety tip, if you, are, if you have an arm like this, definitely make sure that you add in something similar to that of an armpit, if you're seeing this. Now, if you have a longer sleeve, this what I'm doing here probably won't be necessary. But I think I'm in pretty good shape right now, at least for the arm. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about my chest area over here, as, uh, as I was saying before. That might not be a factor later. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go into, again, a little section called uh, Show, Isolate, Select, View Selected, to focus on this area over here. So now you have to make some choices uh, in, certain, in terms of certain areas you want to add, more geometry to, and so on. Uh, to be honest, um, most of the head, at least what, what we have over here, should be able to fit our needs because we are going to smooth this out. There are a couple areas, to, however, that need some adjustment, specifically the eye and the lips, just because the geometry here is way too small to be practical uh, for animation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the eye area, and we want to add, at minimum, three edge loops for the eyelid. Now, this is just the eyelid itself. We're going to be doing some other stuff for the eye as well. Uh, momentarily. Uh, so the first edge, so it'll be consisting again of two edge loops we'll be adding ourselves. So the first edge loop is going to be where the skull and the eyelid meet. So the section that we have over here, basically going to be about the third way that we have over here. So I'll show that one more time so that everyone could see that again. So here's the edge loop for the eye itself. Shift right click, insert edge loop tool, and again, if we're doing this in thirds, one third, two third, three thirds, about the one third area over here, this is where we're adding our eyelid. That was just bad timing, but fortunately it worked out okay. And I'm selecting the two edge loops at the top, and I'm bringing these back. And again, this is going to add a little bit of a roundness to the actual eyelid itself, which is going to be very nice and also help with the opening and closing of the eyelid itself. So that's step one. Step two, we're going to add in other edge loops. Now this one we've just added, we're going to basically bring this up a little bit more, like so. So this would be a nice little middle ground to the area that's going to be opening and closing. We've only did it for the top two edge loops. This is why we kept this so the uh, poly count so light on this. And that's pretty much all we really need to add in at this point for that part. So this shouldn't help make the whole uh, opening and closing of the eye much better. Now there's one last now there's uh, one last step that absolutely must be done. Uh, technically, uh, and that is basically adding the inner part of the eye. Because again, if we have anyone that looks in just the wrong direction, uh, the illusion of the eye that we have over here will be broken. The good news is this is relatively simple to do. We basically double click uh, the edge. This should select in a circular motion like so. In fact, you could give it a quick little test. Oh, that definitely worked. <laughs> and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little bit of extra uh, flesh to the actual eyelid. Now I'm going to do that by going to extrude. And I'm going to go to the offset and just bring this down slightly. Uh, now, in my case, it ends up kind of overdoing the job. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the scale. Yeah, that's way better. And I'm going to move this back just a hair. This will add just enough geometry for the eyelid itself so that it looks a little bit, well, human, so to speak. But not too much because this is only step one. Step two, we're going to extrude a second time. So we just extruded it once. The second time we're going to do this, we're not going to scale it so much. We're just going to move it back, just straight back. And here's and here's the reason why. We want basically want to make sure that once again there's some flesh area for the eye itself. 
So if anyone, for whatever reason, looks inside the eye part itself, uh, it will actually have a little bit extra flesh in there. So, then again, you can just bring this back a little bit so it doesn't harm anything. I'd say bring it to the same area as the eye. And again, if I hit three, the detail in the eye becomes a lot better. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why we add that in. Now, one other part that we really should address, that I'm going to address right now, is uh, this extra geometry for the eye. Now, the only issue that kind of comes in with this, as you can see, is we have two edge loops going from the front of our skull all the way to the back. So, well, what do we do with these? Well, here's the thing. We could actually get rid of a lot of this geometry right now just by selecting these spots over here. And we're going to, again, hit Control. And that part's important. Control, Backspace, to get rid of some of the extra geometry. Or it could be Control, Delete. That would be the bigger button. And uh, we could actually just fix up one of these right away. And that's basically going to be like the, the middlemost one. We'll, we'll, we'll do this together. The other one that's over here, eventually this is going to go to the back part of our skull. Uh, not so much to the back part of our skull, but the actual neck area. And we'll be able to kind of uh, spread this out a little bit more so we have a little bit more geometry. That's going to come up a little bit later, though. So, yeah, let's take a look at this. So, yeah, I went a little bit too far with this. That's fine, though, because it fulfilled its purpose. We were able to get a little extra geometry for the nose. That part was important. But we're going to go uh, right around uh, th this area where we're getting right to the robin mask. So somewhere right around here should be sufficient. And once again, you're going to hit Control Backspace. And it's important to make sure you got rid of any extra geometry, which we did, because again, that's why we hit Control. If there's any vertices, you will have to delete those manually. But again, because we don't have that extra geometry, we can basically bring out certain spots a little bit more. And bring in the vertices over here a little bit more forward. But the purpose of this is to just alleviate a little bit of the stress that we had from too much geometry being in one section. So that looks way better. One thing we need to do now, because we do have this nasty looking five sider over here, is we need to basically uh, wrap this up. Now the good news is, at least for what we're doing, this should be a relatively simple task. Uh, this will just require the use of the cut option. So I'm basically going to the uh, multi-cut over here, and I'm going to cut this from here to the middle part of this area. So that's step one. Then I'm going to go to the little vertice that's over here. Oop, almost forgot. You have to hit return before the next step. So I'm going to once I hit return and this edge is done, I click this vertice over here and click the middle of here. Now the purpose of this is because this is a three-sider and this is a five-sider. Uh, if we basically add a little bit of a cut in between, it basically makes it so that both this and this are now three four-siders, basically making our geometry way better in this case. So this part really shouldn't ruin anything per se. In fact, if we were to smooth this, and I'm just going to smooth this very quick, the geometry shouldn't suffer much F at all. So cool. Now we still need to fix up this area. Uh, but that should be a relatively simple fix. Okay, so we've got most of the other areas. Uh, oh, almost forgot. If you haven't fixed this yet, uh, which we're going to do now, uh, just check your body one last time for any sections that are necessary to add in. Uh, looks like everything's pretty much well balanced, so I'm pretty happy about this so far. Uh, so before we actually get rid of the last bit of geometry, which is what we're going to be doing shortly, uh, wouldn't be a bad idea to save. So edit and save. Let's see. So since my hair is done, I'm going to call this LD for little details. 
Now you can save yours however you want, but again, I'm just making sure that I have extra copies in case something gets weird. So let's see. Now, uh, as I said before, I do want to make the ear, so I'm temporarily going to lose the hair. Now the goal of the ear, in terms of where you want to put it, would be roughly around, uh, take a look at our geometry over here, just moving this area back a little bit. So, you sh so this is one of the reasons why I had us make the geometry the way that we did, so it's easy to identify where the ear is supposed to be. So if you take where this area is, you go down your list, the area roughly is going to start from the middle of the eye and then end at where the uh, bottom part of the nose would be. So if you want a little bit of an illustration on how this would look, basically I got this from Google, went to the side view of the ear. This is basically more or less what you're trying to achieve. So bottom part of the nose. Um, and again, you can either go a little bit higher uh, should you wish to. Uh, it all depends on the style of your person. So it looks like most cases it usually goes a little bit more above the middle of the eye. So that is something to consider. But uh, let's see here. So what I'm going to do here is I can actually select the face of one, two, three, and potentially even go to the four. Yeah, actually, no, these ones should be fine. So one, two, three. Because again, this area over here does get to the bottom of the nose. If you want to double check, yeah, I could actually even go as far as taking this area, bring that a little bit further. There we go. Cool. So I'm taking one, two, three. So again, just to be safe, I'm going to save because ears can be a little bit tricky. And I'm going to actually do a little bit of extrusion. Now, the way that I'm going to approach this one is going to be a little bit different in the sense that uh, I am going to use the offset if possible. Okay. And then once the offset's done, I'm going to just make sure everything lines up properly. So this edge again, I'm going to bring this way lower. So it's going to be roughly around the top of the eye. So actually, I might want to bring this. Yeah, I'm still going to bring this lower because I do want this to match up OK. So there we are. And this bottom part over here, I just want to make sure uh, this lines up all right. Now, the good news is, again, if you're going to add an earlobe, it doesn't need to match 100% perfectly but what we have here should be adequate for our needs. So yeah, there we are, cool. Now again, if you need to, you can always take a moment, just see how big the ear is in comparison and just make sure you're on the right track. So my ear, at least for my character, is quite round. So that's something I'm gonna have to emulate myself. Okay, so now that that's done, or the, oh, actually I can, Bring this over a little bit. Bring this over. Cool. So now I can use the extrude once again to extrude this out a smidge. So this is going to come out like so. Now again, I cannot stress how simple the ear is supposed to be. And the reason why I bring this up is because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to extrude this out just a little bit, and then I'm going to rotate this over like so. Now the purpose of this, and the reason why I'm doing it this way, is the actual ear, uh, the, the uh, actual flesh that's over here, should line up at least a little bit with the side of the face. If you actually take a little bit of a feel, or what I would usually say a little bit of a feel on the side of your face, you usually will notice that it kind of goes smooth from here to here. So I'm just going to bring this back a little bit. So. I can make sure that the smoothness is here. And of course, I can actually move the vertices a little bit more manually if, if necessary. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. 
Now this will also bring this area out a little bit. This is going to be helpful to basically sh prove how much this is going to come out, so that's kind of a good thing. Now eventually later on we're going to add an extra edge loop for the top so that we can round out this area a little bit better, but don't worry about doing that just yet. But uh, now we have the basic shape that we need, so let's add some more details to this. Easiest way to approach the next step is uh, we're going to add an edge loop for the back, and only the back areas we're going to move this inwards, like so. Now the purpose for this, and we're also going to do the same thing over in this area as well, is to make sure that this area kind of goes inwards a little bit more, making this particular part a little bit rounder and such. Making that more pronounced. And we're going to extrude this yet again. And once again, rotate this in and back. So this will make the rounder area for the ear like so. Got to be a little careful though. Don't want to overdo it. I could bring this over. Again, the hardest part here is just making sure that all the geometry here lines up okay. There we are. Cool. And then we can take this area that's over here and we can extrude this inwards. And what I mean by that first is we're going to use the offset, bring this in a little bit. We can round this area like so. Okay. And once that's done, you can basically select this area over here, extrude this inwards. Just going to use the extrude button. Although for the future, if you do hold shift and move in a direction, that'll basically extrude that little section for yourself. It could be helpful in certain situations. but also can be a bit of a pain in the butt if you're not expecting it. Now again, if you do have longer hair, you don't necessarily need to do this part, but it can be helpful. So with this alone, you probably would actually have enough for your ear. Just make sure that you don't accidentally have any messy geometry here. If I hit the three button, it's pretty close to what I was getting. I still need to round out the top, but that'll come in a moment. Oop. Actually, that, this area over here I need to bring up a little bit. There we are. Okay, cool. So if you want to keep on going, you could do some more elements in here like adding some extra cartilage uh, just by some very creative uh, cutting. You can extrude the area for the ear canal. But again, since many of you do have a character with longer hair, uh, that might not be so necessary. But again, if you have no hair, then yeah, you need to make some ears. Sorry. But that's pretty much what I wanted to show in this case. So the final step. Now, it promises is the final step at this point. We need to get rid of any geometry that's unnecessary. So I would strongly recommend you save before this part. Okay, now, uh, what I would strongly recommend you do as well, even though we've made multiple copies, it's still a good idea to uh, just, when you're doing this next part, make a copy of your original. And always make sure that you have this just in case things go wrong, because 
Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will. So hitting Shift D over here. And this is my long biggest one. And I'm going to call this, let's see, model ready. As in this is the model that's ready to do what's necessary. OK, so that's fine. I'm going to call, and I'm going to call this layer so I can tell the difference. OK. And since this is not the original body, I'm going to call this just regular body. Cool. OK. Now I am going to find my original body at this point and just hide it, because I don't want this to be messed with. And I just want to make sure that that's ready. And this is just me being extra cautious. OK. So here's, the, so here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Because when you're animating, especially if you don't plan on having your character change their clothes at all, there's a lot of geometry in here you don't need. So for example, uh, my shirt over here, if I was, yep, there we go. If I basically put this in transparency mode, I could definitely see a lot of geometry that's completely unnecessary. Anything that basically goes down is not going to be seen. Uh, this area for the legs, that's definitely not going to be seen. So if it's not going to be seen, lose it. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is, again, going to be in a more of a case-by-case -case basis. So you're going to have to make some tough choices in terms of what's going to stick around and what are you going to get rid of. Uh, now, if you made a t-shirt, uh, you're definitely going to be in a much better position than I am. If you did make a tank top, it is going to be a little bit trickier, but it won't be too bad. And again, I will be doing the more difficult part so you can get an idea of what you're in for and such. So uh, so what I usually would do first is I would get select one area that I want to get rid of. And yeah, no problems there. I hit delete. And uh, yeah, so once this area is done, I double click. I can get rid of all the other parts that are unnecessary. Now, when you eventually do uh, the skinning and rigging of your character, this is going to make your life a thousand times easier because there it's geometry you don't have to worry about. And trying to skin on, on top of an already existing skin, while possible, is not exactly very pleasant. So that first part, that was easy. The other couple parts, this is where things get tricky because once again, you have to decide what really needs to stick around and what can you lose? So in this case, uh, in my case anyways, I have a bit of a tank top. So uh, this area for the neck, uh, this needs to stay. Otherwise, I'm going to miss out on this part. But I'd like to try and separate the arm if possible. So it's going to be possible. So what I'm going to do for this is I am going to uh, use the Insert Edge Loop tool add an extra edge loop. So I add just enough geometry for that part. Ah, perfect. So now I can get rid of this face over here with little to no consequence. Bam. Cool. Now once you've gotten rid of the geometry and are keeping the areas that you need, uh, try to actually sculpt out the areas that are necessary in this too. Now, a nice thing about, because we've separated these parts, because I really didn't need any more geometry for the arm, but I did need some for the head, I can actually do that now. But before that, uh, I am going to completely separate the arm for the head, because they don't need to be together in this case. So I'm going to go to my modeling, and I'm just going to separate. And that should separate the two of them, as you can see. And now that they're separate, Adding more geometry, not a problem anymore. In fact, getting rid of some geometry, also not a problem. So I could actually get rid of, just double checking just to make sure. So in theory, I could get rid of all three of these faces and then just move these vertices down. So I'm going to go into my little area over here, turn off the transparency mode, and bam. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to leave these other parts up because, uh, again, this is something that is kind of needed. So definitely don't want to mess with that if possible. So that face needs to stay there. And it looks like the one behind it 
that also needs to stay here. But I can move this back a little bit. I can move this back a little bit. As long as it's within the general area, we should be in good shape. There we are. But again, if you accidentally get a little bit over uh, done with you know what you get rid of, that's why it's always good to have the original mesh just in case. Now, in the case of what I have over here, I'm just going to quickly take a look. Yeah, so I really don't need this face. And But this is, again, where we're going to be coming up to uh, thinking, do we need these spots or not? So in this case, uh, from what I have, as you can see, I can add a little bit more geometry, and that might be able to help out a little bit, because there's a huge chunk of area that is just completely unless that just needs a little bit more geometry to make that mesh better. So that's looking nice. Much better in that case. And if I have some extra geometry that's kind of stuck in here, I can probably lose it at this point. Mm. That's not really that stuck in there, but I think I might want to bring this area again. Just try and make sure that the actual geometry, if you can, emphasis on the word if you can, uh, follows what you have in here. Because again, it doesn't need to be 100% the same if it, does, if it isn't working properly. So yeah, this is just going up a little bit more. This is going up a little bit more. And the purpose of this as well, just to, to kind of give you an idea why we're doing it this way, is uh, again, if, if we're having our geometry kind of, uh, that's eventually going to be skinned, we want to make sure it hugs uh, by where there might be some open area and so on for the actual mesh itself. So if you have something around the ballpark of what I have here, of course, this part kind of came out a little bit, but that's okay. I can move that back. And move this back. Ha, ah, perfect. I think that looks at actually a little bit better. There's still some elements that we need to fix up. Like for example, if you have like a sleeve, like what I have over here, I can actually just take this moment. Oop, of course, I have to turn off the uh, shirt here for a second. Ah, here we go. And I can use the extrude. And I'm just scaling this in a little bit and inwards. There would be a little collision, but that's okay. But this way, people won't be able to see inside your sleeves. So something like that is very helpful for us. So I'm going to show that one more time so you can see what I did. So again, if you have like an open area over here, that could be a problem. And this is on the shirt, by the way. You could potentially do this on your sleeves. If you double click over here, however, and then use the scale, hold shift, it extrudes like so. And then you could bring this back a little bit. So this way, once again, it's less of a likely chance that anyone can see inside your sleeve. That is a good thing. Now you will have to do that eventually with our open area for the, uh, for the neck and such, but hold off on that for now. Don't worry about that quite yet. Because uh, I want to make sure that this is as simple as possible. I'm just bringing that down. And speaking of as simple as possible, uh, we ne do need to add a little bit more geometry now that the option presents itself. Because right now, as stated before, this area needs to be a little bit rounder to make this ear look nicer. And we need one more little bit of geometry to go to the back of the skull to uh, make sure that we don't have that ugly looking five sider over here. Plus, we might be able to round out the back of the neck a little bit nicer too. So, what I'm gonna do here, uh, the first one I'm gonna, is the simpler one. I'm going to add an edge loop right in the middle of the ear. So shift right click, insert edge loop tool. And this will not only add a little bit of an extra edge loop for the top of the skull to make that look a little bit nicer, and also I could bring this area a little bit more forward. But now that that's done, I can actually select the top part of the ear and round that out a little bit nicer. 
You can do the same thing for the bottom part of the ear over here. So yeah, there we are. Much better. So yeah, just basically one little edge loop going from the middle of the ear up to the top of the, the skull to the bottom area. That basically fixes that right up. Then I can do the same thing for the back area over here. So I could either use a connect or alternatively I can use an insert edge loop. Try to line that up the best I can. Oops. Looks like there's some shenanigans going on over here, but that should be fixable. There we are. And then for the last part, I'm going to just go into vertex mode here. I should be able to just cut this up. So I can use the multi-cut tool, click here, click and drag the best I can. Looks so like there's some shenanigans going on over here. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Well, let's see. I'll tell you what, in cases where that doesn't work, should be able to there we go and okay now for some reason if that doesn't work might be there's some shenanigans going on over here which in that case hopefully deleting that polygon should hopefully be able to help fix that just taking a quick little look around just see what's going on okay everything seems fine so i'm going to use the regular bridge to bridge up those sections and do the same thing here cool everything will have a way to be able to fix these so i think that should wrap up most of the stuff that i wanted to go into so kind of a quick review what we've done we basically added in uh the needed geometry for our mesh. Like for example, if we need, if areas are spread out, we add some more geometry. If they're bending, we added some extra geometry specifically on our leg and so on. Uh, if, you ha if your ear is visible, we added that just now. If, and there's no Fs about it, we needed to add more geometry around the eye, which is why it looks the way that it does. Uh, we fixed up some of our five or more geometry. Uh, bits of geometry. Take a quick look at the lips again. Yeah, I think it could use one more. So I'm just making an edge loop right over here. And I'm just basically selecting these very quickly just to round out them lips. There we go. That looks way nicer. And what the heck, I'm going to add one more edge loop around the lips over here so that stays more consistent. And one in the middle. Because, again, you, you might be able to just add the geometry in certain spots of the body, but never underestimate how much geometry can help uh, in other areas like what we just did here. So let's take a quick look. Now that's much, much nicer. Okay, now I think that should do it. Okay, so the last video that we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically taking our right side, our person's left, and bringing it to the other side. Uh, we're going to add any last details that are necessary, specifically around the mouth and the opening for your shirt. And then we should be able to actually smooth this model up, uh, particularly around the head and the clothing making everything look way better. So once again, hopefully you found this video educational. This was a bit of a longer video. Uh, the last one hopefully should not be quite so long. So thank you for joining.